I'm your lame average techie, and today I'm going to show you how to set up OSPF on Juniper switches. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at our lab here. I'm running Eve NG. I've got a Windows Virtual Server here with an IP address of 192.168.1.10, and then I've got another Virtual Server here with an IP address of 192.168.2.10, and the gateway resides on each respective switch. We've got site A and site B. So the gateway on the side would be 192.168.1.1 and the gateway on the side would be 192.168.2.1. We are going to set up an OSPF area between these two switches and these switches are interconnected on interface XE001 and we are using the subnet 10.10.10.0.30. I've got dot one configured on this side and I have dot two configured on this side. Okay, so before we start, let's just have a look at our uh, switch config here. Just going to go into side A, just uh, log in here. So if we go into CLI, we do a show configuration display set. You'll see everything that's uh, configured here. We've got XE000 connecting to host one, and it is in VLAN 10. Then we have XE001, which is connecting to site B, and it's got an IP address of 10.10.10.1.30. Right now, OSPF or static routes configured uh, yet. So we'll just go back to site B. We'll just do the same here. Let's go into CLI and do a show configuration display set. Right, so you see we have identical config on this side. We have uh, host one connecting to XE000. This one is in VLAN 20. And we have an IP address on the interconnecting interface of 10.10.10.2 slash 30. Right, no static routes configured here either. So the goal of today's exercise would be for host 192.168.1.10 to be able to reach host 192.168.2.10. We're not going to make use of any static routes at the moment. So if we look at the root table, we'll go to site A. We just do a show root. You'll see that I do have root entries for the uh, directly connected interfaces between the two switches. Then I have a slash 24 root, which is connecting via IRB.10. Now IRB.10 is the routable interface for VLAN 10. And that's all the root entries we have on the switch. If we have a look on switch B or site B, we just do a show route again. You'll see we have uh, very similar entries this side. Now we just have the route for 192.168.2.0 slash 24, which is direct by RB.20, which is the routable interface in VLAN 20. Then we also just have the slash 30 route on the directly connected interface between the two sites. Now, if we go back to our lab here, we can log on to this uh, server here, and we can just see if we can reach our gateway, which is 192.168.1.1, and we are able to reach it. Would we be able to reach 2.10 destination net unreachable? So destination net unreachable means that the network destination network is unreachable, which means that our gateway does not have a route for this destination. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to set up OSPF between these two switches. Let's get started on that. So you just go into configuration mode, edit protocols OSPF. You can see that we don't have any config here yet. So you first start off by specifying an area. So set area. You can either type in 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 .0, or you can just type in 0 and it will autocomplete to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. .0. And we're going to specify the interface connecting to the site B switch, which would be XE-001.0. All right, if we just do a show here, we can now go top and commit. All right, if we do a run show OSPF neighbor, Obviously, the OSPF would not come up. So now we can just do the same on site B. All right, we're going to edit media, edit protocols OSPF, set area 0, interface XE-001.0. And we do a commit. Now, if we do a run show OSPF neighbor, you'd see that it's busy coming up. The state is two-way. You just give it a, a little bit of time and it should go to full. And uh, now it's uh, established. So 
we can just do a run show route on this side. You can see that the routing table hasn't changed because we're not really advertising anything via OSPF just yet. All we've done is we put the interfaces connecting the two sites together into OSPF area zero. So area zero would actually be uh, your backbone area. In larger deployments, area zero should be reserved purely for backbone. But for the purpose of this lab, we're just going to use area zero for all routes shared. So whilst this was going on, I just wanted to check on site A as well. We could see that the OSPF was in X start here as well. So I just wanted to make sure that the MTU was actually the same on both switches. If your OSPF is stuck in X start, it usually means that there's an MTU issue on the interfaces. If we just have a look here at the corresponding interface on site B, not like that, XE001, if we do a show, we've got an MTU of 9192. So seeing that these are backhaul or backbone links, we enable Jumbo frames on it and we just make the MTU 9192 on both sides. Okay, so now we have to go back to our lab and our design here. So the purpose would be for the subnet 192.168.1.0/24 to be reachable from 192.168.2.0/24. Now, how do we do that? So there are two ways you can actually do this. The first thing is, let me just go back here. If we do a run show root, you would see that we do have 192.168.1.0/24, which is directly connected via IRB.10. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is the VLAN interface or the routable interface in VLAN 10. So one easy way is you can just go into top edit uh, protocols OSPM. I, I just like to type in top just in case I'm not in the top level. Uh, it's just a, a force of habit. It's not always needed. If you're already at the top hierarchy, you don't need to type in top. All right, so let's just do a show here. And you can see that we only have our interconnecting interface XE001 in this area zero of OSPF. So what we can do is we can just say set interface, oops, set area, set area zero interface IRB dot ten. Right, if we do a show, all we've done is we've added this IRB interface which knows about the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 root. Okay, we can do a commit and we can do the same at site B. So now we can actually type in top because we are under edit interfaces and the top, we just take it to the, uh, to the top uh, hierarchy and you can say top edit protocols, OSPF, set area zero interface IRB.20. Let's do a show, top and commit. All right, and now if we have a look at the root table, now you'll see that we are learning the root 192.168.1.0 slash 24 via OSBF. We look at site A, run show root. We should now have a root for 192.168.2.0 and it's also being learned via OSBF. All right, so now we can just go back to our virtual machine 1.10. So we haven't changed anything else. Let's just see if we can ping across now. And now you see that the host at site A is able to ping the host at site B. So let's just go to the host at site B, see if we can do the reverse, 192.168.1.10, and it's uh, replying. So as I said earlier, there are two ways you can actually do this. This one is considered a little bit more dirty, if you can put it that way. The other way would be more correct, and that would be by doing it via export policies. So let's just uh, revert our changes here. So we just go into protocols OSPF again, and we'll just delete area zero interface IRB, not like that. And we do a show. So now we only have the switch interconnect here, and we can just do the same at site B. So delete protocols OSPF area zero interface IRB.20. We do a show pipe compare, and we've removed IRB.20. So if we have a look at our routes now, you'll see that the 192.168.1.0 route that it learned via OSPF would now be removed. And we can just confirm the same on site A. So we just do a run show route and the 2.0 slash 24 route has been removed.
So now we can start with our export policy. What we do is we do we go into edit policy options. We can give our policy a name. So set policy statement. I'm just going to name it OSPF export. And we're going to say from root filter. Remember, this is now the root that you're going to export into OSPF. And we are going to export 192.168.1.0 slash 24 to our OSPF neighbor. So you can just type in 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And here you can type in exact because this is the exact root that this switch is aware of and that we are going to export into OSPF. Right, and then we can just configure a then statement saying then accept. So if we have a look at our root fault here, or our policy statement, it just says from root filter 192.168.1.0 slash 24 exact, then accept. Then you have to apply this export policy into OSPF. So we go into, not interfaces, protocols OSPF, and you can say set export, oh, not like that, export OSPF export. Okay, we do a show pipe compare. There's all our changes, and you can see that we are applying this OSPF export policy as an export policy in OSPF. So we can just do a commit. So now we can just go back to site B. Let's just see if the root table has changed. And you can see we now have the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 root learned via OSPF again. And if we have a look at the root table on site A, run show root we still do not have a 192.168.2.0 slash 24 root so that means that we need to do exactly the same at site b so we just go edit policy options set policy statement ospf export from root filter and this time we're going to use 192.168.2.0 slash 24 because remember this is the directly connected root that we're going to export or advertise to switch one. And we're gonna put it as exact. And then we're going to say then accept. Then we have to go back into edit protocols OSPF and we apply this as an export policy. All right, and we just do a show pipe compare. You can see we've created our policy option, our, our export policy, and we are applying it into OSPF. So we just do a commit. And if we have a look at the root table on switch A or site A, now we have a root 192.168.2.0 slash 24, and it's learned via OSPF. All right, so now back to our testing again. Let's see if we do have inter-site communication. So from 1.10, we're going to ping 2.10, and you can see that it's replying. And we go back to 2.10 and see if we can ping 1.10, and you can see it is replying. All right, and there's uh, two very simple ways to set up OSPF on Juniper switches. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, I hope to see you guys in the next one.